Good evening. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here tonight. This is our 10th presentation in the year 2009. We have one more in December, so please come. It's on the, the age-defying secrets. So we talk about aging and those things that can prevent us from aging and those things that can actually help reverse the aging process <laughs> if we do them. Um, so please come to that. That's in early December, I think the first week in December. And then in 2010, which is right around the corner, we'll start another series of presentations. So I, I give you a heads up right now because if you commit to them now and put them on your calendar, you know what, it, you know, sometimes it, it just makes it easier to come. So I thank you for coming. It's really hard to come out on a cold, dark, rainy, windy <laughs> evening. I so appreciate that, but I so appreciate you being here, and I really think we have a lot of work to do, so if we could just work together. So it's not just a matter of me staying up here and giving you information, it's a matter of you opening up your minds and, and thinking and, and just trying to follow along with me. I have a lot of material to cover. You think it's one topic, and a lot of times I glob a lot of different things together, but I don't know. Uh, to me, this is a near and dear topic. So we have a lot to cover, so just, just, just stay with me. Just stay with me and keep your minds open. And even if you go away and you learn one thing tonight, that's all you need to know. You don't have to be way over here. Don't think that you're going to walk out of here and then you're going to do all these perfect, perfectly wonderful things for yourself because it doesn't happen like this. Really, the idea really is just to figure out where you are. It has nothing to do with me or your neighbor or anybody else. Just figure out where you are, and then it's just a matter of transitioning to the next level. That's all. So all we're doing right tonight is opening up doors of awareness. So you're not going to get everything that I say because I have a ton of material tonight, but it doesn't matter. What you do get is exactly what you need to get. So just appreciate where you are, and then appreciate the fact that you're here. I mean, that's an amazing thing in itself, and congratulate yourself for that. And now, we're just going to help you try to get to the next level. That's all. That's all any of us can really do. And it's amazing as you walk through doors of awareness. You walk through one door of awareness, and things open up to you. And then you walk through another door of awareness, and then another one, and another one. And it really is quite extraordinary, isn't it, what we um, can accomplish in our own minds, and then be able to apply it to our own lives. I'm glad you have pens. I'm glad on the paper, on the handouts, we have different handouts here. We have a lot of information. Katie's been copying, 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 copying. Um, I think it's always good to take notes myself because <laughs> I call it the two uh, brain cell syndrome. I know I have it. You have two brain cells, information in one brain cell and information out the other brain cell. So it's always good to, to write things down as I say them. I did give you quite a few notes and handouts, so you have a lot there. I have now four and a half month old twin baby girls. And it's the first time I've been a grandmother, as some of you know. But it's interesting, when they, came, when they were born, I, I held them and I was with them um, probably like a half an hour after they were born, or maybe, no, probably less, probably 15 minutes. And I looked at those little babies and I said to myself, isn't it a miracle? Isn't it a miracle? These little babies, they're so perfect. They are this. They're like great big bright light bulbs. They were formed perfectly, thank God, in their mother's womb. She didn't have to do anything except to eat right and take care of herself. And here these perfectly beautiful baby girls came out. And I was thinking about, it's such an example of how when we are born, we are born like great big, great big bright light bulbs. And then I started thinking to myself, this is all the, when I'm holding these, wonderful creatures, uh, I was thinking to myself, isn't it a shame that over a period of time and years, the light bulb just gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer? And it's not supposed to. We think it's supposed to. We think as we age, it's supposed to do that. But we age way too much prematurely in the United States. We're not supposed to, our light bulbs are not supposed to go out prematurely. And they do, and it's because of what we do to ourselves. It's not because of your mother or father's genes, because we tend to blame everything on that. It's not because of that. It's 95% of it's because of what we do on a daily basis. And you know what? You can't do anything about what your mothers did to you and how your mothers fed you 
and how your mothers may have taught you the wrong thing, and how your doctors taught you the wrong thing, and how the culture taught you the wrong thing. We can't go back there. But you know what we can do? We can say, you know what? It is not my mother's responsibility anymore. I'm a big girl. I'm a big boy. It is my responsibility now. My mother did the best she could do, but you know what? She taught me the wrong eating habits. So now it's up to me to do what? And now it's up to me to create what? The right eating habits in my own life because your life is important. And in order for, to, for you to add days to your life and life to your days, we have to do way different things than what we were taught. Is it painful? Yes. Is it hard? Yes. Is it overwhelming? Yeah, it's really overwhelming. But that doesn't mean you can't do one step at a time. You don't have to be perfect. As Carrie and I say, we say, what? Actually, Carrie, I think, started the phrase, and I stole it from her. <laughs> it's, Carrie runs our pants party, which is a weight loss group. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. So women, don't expect to be perfect. You're not perfect. You're a mere mortal on the planet. You're not perfect. But it is about progress. So feel good about progressing. Just coming here and getting information is what? It's progress. So just be grateful for that and don't worry about, let go of the perfection part. In the United States of America, we have terrible stats. Yeah, this is not working. Huh. Yeah, right. Okay. If you look at the four out of five of us die of heart disease and cancer. Heart disease alone now takes not a million people, it takes 1,200,000 people. Heart disease alone. Heart attacks, we have 4,000 heart attacks a day, 50% are fatal, and 50% have no warning. In other words, we feel fine, and then we're dead. Other sad statistics. Breast cancer, one in three die of cancer. I don't know what it is. Think about it. Heart disease takes over a million people. Heart disease takes over 500,000 women a year. Breast cancer takes what? 50,000 women a year. But why is it that breast cancer evokes such emotion in us, in the women? Why is that? I don't know, I've been trying to figure that out, but it really does. When we find out someone has breast cancer, if we have breast cancer, we're really, we are emotionally stung by that. I keep trying, maybe it's because the breast is an intimate part of a woman's body. Maybe because someone's now messing around with the intimate part of our bodies. Maybe it's because they're going to burn it, and maybe it's because they're going to put chemicals in her body. I don't, I don't get it, I don't understand it, but this is what I did all week, and I thought it was done, but... Here I am, crying again. <laughs> it's, maybe it's because they want to cut it off, and it's part of her body. I don't really understand. You can't cut the heart out. <laughs> so maybe that's why we're not so emotionally attached to what? Heart disease. But we certainly are to cancer. And even more so, the core of that is breast cancer. And we think it's genetics. T. Colin Campbell, this man right here, says it's less than 1%. Genetics. Less than 1% genetics. The standard is it's 5% or less. So that means it's not our mother's and our father's faults. <laughs> that means it's what? It's our fault. And that stings too. Taking responsibility for our own bodies. That stings too. It's looking in the mirror and saying, you know what? I need to take responsibility for my own body. If I want to live a long, healthy, active, joyful, purposeful life. So we need to take responsibility now. So you can look at all the other stats, breast cancer, diabetes, hypertension, overweight, my goodness, and it's gone up since I've done these posters, obesity. Obesity is now 33%. Obesity means you're 30 pounds overweight. Now here's breast cancer. 50,000 women a year die of breast cancer. In 1971, in 20 women were diagnosed with breast cancer. In the 1970s, Nixon says what? <laughs> Besides some of the things he said. He said, we are going to eradicate cancer. I don't know if anybody remembers that. But Nixon claimed we were going to eradicate cancer. That just shows how 
stupid Nixon was when it came to cancer. I don't know, he's brilliant in other ways, but when it came to cancer. Today, one in eight are diagnosed with breast cancer. In spite of the technology and the money that goes into that and the, and the, and the rallies and the groups and all those things that we use to um, try to fight cancer, we're going about it the wrong way. It's not about early detection. There's no such thing as early detection when it comes to breast cancer. Men, you're not off the hook because men get breast cancer too. One of our patients came in last week and said her neighbor, male, has breast cancer. But not only that, prostate cancer is the same thing as breast cancer. So when I'm saying breast cancer, it also means prostate cancer. And it just so happens that one in 10 men die from prostate cancer. One in 10 men die from prostate cancer. In the United States, we get way more breast cancer than they do in Japan and China, for instance. Genetics, 5%, maybe 5%. Because genetics is only 5%, we don't have to sit around and think, you know, we think we're like a sitting duck. Isn't that what it's like? We think we're like a sitting duck. And at any moment, someone's going to pick us off. And who's going to get picked off next? It's sort of like that, isn't it? Because one more day, we hear of someone else having been diagnosed with cancer, or breast cancer. I swear it's almost every day. Is it going to be you next? Is it going to be me next? Who's going to be the next person? It's not luck. It's because of what we've done to our bodies all of our lives. Is it too late? I don't know. I don't know that. But you know what? I'm going to do the best I can do. I didn't eat very well for my, the first 30 years of my life. Well, okay. That's over and done with, but by golly, I am not eating like that anymore. I'm not doing it because I'm going to do whatever I can do not to get cancer or heart disease or diabetes or affect my life anyway. I mean, I want to be here for those little grandbabies. I want to be here for my children. I think they need me more now than they needed me when they were children, which is interesting. <laughs> Prostate cancer is the leading non-smoking cancer. In the United States, our males die from prostate cancer, 1 in 10. In China, it's 1 in 100,000. There's a huge difference. You know what it has to do with? Our lifestyle, our activity level, and what we put into our bodies. And unfortunately, <laughs> we're bringing the food we put into our bodies over to China. In Japan, so the statistics are not going to be so good as we bring more and more McDonald's over there and teach them to eat like us. Let's look at breast cancer in your handouts. I don't know what color this is, actually. Um, breast cancer, yes, how'd you know? Breast cancer increased risk factor. So if you wanted to, you could take notes as I go down. The cancers are cancers are cancers are cancers. And I'll talk about what cancer really is. But breast cancer, what's really involved with breast cancer, along with all the other factors that all cancers have to do with, it's our estrogen level in females. So it's our estrogen level. And that's the reason why we get breast cancer. And there's one of the reasons. And but it's predominant in people that have breast cancer is their high estrogen level. And there's different things, things that raise the estrogen level. And they are, number one, and it's not written down like this here, but I want you to write them down so you remember them. Because this is a lot of information and you're not going to look at it after a while. But the first one is what? Fat. Because fat, all your fat cells produce estrogen. They all become little hormonal little machines, and they, all your fat cells produce estrogen. The more fat cells you have in your body, the more estrogen that's produced. So fat is number one. Number two, animal protein. Any kind of animal protein. I don't care if it, it, it goes like this in the sea, or whether it flaps its little wings, or moves like a cow, or oink, oink, oink like a pig, or... Uh, Dairy products, any kind, eggs, any kind of animal protein, that raises your estrogen level. Do you know why? Because animals have hormones in them. 
even quote unquote organically grown animals. Animals by nature have hormones. So organically grown animals still have hormones. We don't want any more hormones in our body and that's we get them from what? The animal protein. And number three, no fiber. Fiber is really important in lowering estrogen levels. And of course, with the fiber comes what? Because if, and I'm not talking about Metamucil. I'm talking about the real fiber and real food. There's a difference. It's not the same if it comes from real food. And it comes in your fruits and vegetables, mainly. And also with the fiber, and you can't take away from it, it comes in a perfect package of what? The, all the nutrients you need. So those are the three big ones in breast cancer. So weight has to do with your weight. <laughs> if you are 45 pounds overweight, your chances of getting breast cancer increases by twice. So if you're 45 pounds overweight, your chances of getting breast cancer increases twice. So it has to do with the weight, has to do with the, with the, the fat, the dietary fat. So every kind of fat that you get, that means fat in animal products, that means saturated fat, that means unsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, that means the oils that you have in the grocery store that we use to cook with, including Queen Olive. I don't know how she got that status, but I'm ready to knock her off. <laughs> Queen Olive is fat, and it just goes to your fat. It just adds calories to what? to your body, and where do the calories go? Right there. <laughs> Who wants it? So olive oil is not good for you, so we can uh, dispel that myth right now. Uh, hormone, you get an increase of hormones in your dairy products, also in your meat products. Oral, contraception, oral contracepti uh, contraceptives, and also HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy started becoming popular in the 1950s. I've been in practice now 30 years, 30-something years. And when I started my practice 30 years ago, now, what is it like? And when was that? That was in the early 80s. I had women that would come in. They would get diagnosed with breast cancer. The first thing the doctors did in the early 1980s was what? Took them off of HRT. I was a young girl, but boy, that made sense to me. I'm thinking, my goodness, why are they taking them off of HRT like right now? Because everybody knew in their guts there was a relationship between the hormones that you get in hormone replacement therapy and breast cancer. And was anything done about it? Absolutely not, because it was an easy fix for women. We were demanding it, and that was the protocol. That was the protocol. And then they thought it had something, you know, it prevented heart disease and it um, prevented strokes. Well, they found out the opposite. So we all kind of knew way back when, but women were, I mean, it was a cultural thing. It was one way to ease symptoms of menopause. You can get natural products that work 70% of the time. And Dr. Dougal can call him, he has those. Well, HRT works 70% of the time without the side effects and without the HRT results. So they found out in 1990, no, in 2002, they did that great big study. I think it was with 16,000 women. It was supposed to go for eight years. They, it concluded three years less than eight years. Why? Because there's so many women that were dying from what? Breast cancer, ovarian cancer, heart disease, and stroke. The group of women who were taking HRT. And you know, there was a big, whew, because it was a multi-gazillion dollar industry. And it all went where? Down there. And then in 2006, I believe it was, 2006, they did another study, and they noticed that what? Oh, the breast cancer w rate went down because women weren't taking HRT any longer. So you know what the message is, though? The message is watch out what you're taking now because you don't know what's going to happen 20 years down the line. And you know what? No matter what your doctor tells you now, you've got to look at that for yourself because I guarantee you, your doctor's not going to be around when you're going, you know, 
down. I don't want to say it. Okay, the other things that affect breast cancer are alcohol. You know, these things, I just get so upset sometimes when you hear, Americans love to hear good things about the bad things they do. I mean, do we really believe that chocolate's good for us? I mean, do we really actually believe that? Do we really believe that caffeine is good for us? Do we actually believe that? Do we really believe that red wine with its antioxidants is actually good for us? Do we really believe that? One drink a day, if you're consistent with one drink a day, increases your breast cancer rate, uh, increases your risk 22%. One drink a day. Now, how many of us have been drinking one glass of wine that we think is good for us a day. Move on. So in your handout, you'll see increase in estrogen, alcohol consumption, coffee consumption, smoking, lack of exercise. If you walk four hours a week, women, if you walk four hours a week, your, your chance of getting breast cancer decreases by 33%. Whoa. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And then um, lack of exercise, a lack of plant foods, eating the standard American foods, which are the oils and the sugar and the salt and the cholesterol and the chemicals and all the calories. And also those foods are low in fiber. In this book that was uh, written by me. <laughs> um, I have to tell you that all my, I don't think for myself, I make things, I get them from everybody else, all those smart people out there, and then I simplify them so that I can understand them. And then in that simplification process, I'm able to hopefully give you some information because I, it has to be simple for me. And so this is a simple way of looking at this, which is excellent, excellent book. But then people, I give it to people and then they come back to me and say, no, it's too dense. They don't want to read it. Then I say, well, read this. This is so much, e this is easier. Although that's an ex excellent book to read. So, animal protein. We talked about animal. No, so sorry. Let's go to here. Now, we know that smoking is not good for us, don't we? We know that there's a relationship somehow between cancer, any cancer, including breast cancer, and smoking. We know that, don't we? This is what we don't know. That this, our food that we eat, now kills more people than smoking. So when we're thinking smug, that we don't smoke and we don't have those bad habits, think about what you're eating. Because what we're eating is killing us. So we have to get real. We sort of have to get down and dirty with this and say, I need to make decisions now for what's going to happen to me down the road. Is it hard to break out of old habits? Nancy, is it hard to break out of old, old habits? Very hard. Of course it's hard, but so what? It's way harder to get a breast cut off. It's way harder to get radiation. It's way harder to go through those things we need to go through in order to survive. So let's work at it now. This is the animal protein. Animal protein is hazardous to our, our health. It's not just the fat and the cholesterol. That alone is hard on us. So, but it's not just the fat and cholesterol. It's the animal protein. As in, it's in here. I have this book in my office couple copies, so you can always borrow it. It's an excellent book. But here, animal protein, all animal protein, are, proteins are accompanied by artery clogging and heart stopping cholesterol, always linked, also linked to leukemia, cancers of the liver, liver, colon, lung, breast, brain, and stomach. Red meat is not the only baddie for high cholesterol. Read and be amazed. There's high, high cholesterol in fish, high cholesterol in chicken, high cholesterol in eggs. According to T. Colin Campbell's book, right there, according to T. Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, animal protein alone, completely separate and distinct from animal fat and cholesterol, listen to this, animal protein alone, without the fat and without the cholesterol, 
is quite possibly the most toxic chemical that we eat in the United States. That's a bold statement, isn't it? But it's from a scientist. It's not from a cheerleader. It's me. It's from someone who knows. And he's done studies, and so he knows. He found a shocking correlation between isolated animal protein and killer diseases like heart disease, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, kidney diseases, and osteoporosis. So it is not just the fat and the cholesterol. It's the animal protein that most of us eat every day. And we wonder why there's so much cancer out there. So I want to explain a little bit about cancer. Cancer is like planting a yard. So planting grass, not a yard. So you're planting grass. Now there's three basic stages to cancer. You have the initiation stage. Then you have the promotion stage. And then you have the progression stage. Three stages. The first stage, the initiation stage, that's when the genetic makeup is changed just like that in a cell. So no longer is it a healthy cell, it is now a cancer cell. The initiation stage is not reversible. It's completely irreversible. Once you have that renegade cell, it is there. Unless your body, what, happens to eat it up. So that's like planting the seeds on your dirt ground, on your soil. So those are the seeds. They don't go away. The next phase is what? Promotion. Promotion is what? Promotion is when those seeds sprout and grow. That's the phase that's reversible. If you're in that phase of cancer, which you don't know, by the way, if you're in that phase of cancer, if you're eating correctly and doing those things in order to anti-promote the cancer, then guess what? That is reversible. So we don't know the processes that are going on. How many people do you know that were told they had cancer, had no idea that they had cancer? I was in SARC. Uh, this is probably about five years ago. I was in the foyer of SARC, which is our exercise facility, and it was about 20 of 6 in the morning, because it was early in the morning, we were just standing around waiting to get in there, and one of my friend's acquaintances came up to me and said, Leslie, um, I was just diagnosed yesterday with ca breast cancer. And uh, she said, um, her next sentence was something that we would all say was, uh, I just never thought would happen to me. And then she had a whole lot of reasons why. She just never thought it would happen to her. She thought she ate well enough. I know for a fact she didn't, but she thought she did. She thought she ate well enough. She thought she exercised enough. The doctor has been taking mammograms of her breasts every year for the last 10 years. The doctor could never find it, pick up anything because cancer is like that in the breast. It has to be able to be picked up. It takes a long time to pick it up. Not only that, so the doctor said, I don't think you will ever get breast cancer. I can't see anything, and this is what we've been doing for the last 10 years. Radiation does cause cancer, by the way. Just so happens. So the doctor also did blood work, came back with stellar blood numbers. The doctor said the, say the, say the, said the same thing to her. You're excellent health. I have rarely seen a woman in this kind of health. The next year, boom, what happens? She was diagnosed with breast cancer. And now she's looking at me and saying, how did this happen? How could this be? I mean, it's really? We don't know. We don't know, but we need to do what we can do not to get that. So in here, he talks about those phases. And this is what he says. The promotion phase is reversible depending on whether the early cancer growth is given the right conditions in which to live. So that means if you give, don't give those cancer cells the right environment, they'll die, just like the seeds in your lawn. 
This is where certain dietary factors are so important. Those dietary factors called promoters feed cancer growth. Other dietary factors called anti-promoters slow cancer growth. What are our anti-promoters of cancer? Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Cancer growth flourishes when there are more promoters than anti-promoters. So you see what happens? You, you have this balancing act, this tug of war going on in your, inside your body every second. You have the anti-promoters that are trying to do what? They're trying to keep the cells healthy and keep the cells from those little seeds from what? Growing into cancer cells, sprouting into cancer cells. And then you have the promoters. And so guess what? In any given day, and I guarantee that most of you, because we're all on this journey, but I guarantee most of you are eating more promoters of cancer than you are of anti-promoters. So we have to change the balance around. Does that mean we have to be perfect? No, and thank goodness, because we can't be perfect. We have to change the balance around. So we have to be eating more anti-promoters of cancer than we are eating promoters. And that's why I have so many charts tonight, because I'm going to show you all the promoters that we're eating. I guarantee you that most of us start when we get up in the morning and we finish with our last uh, dessert in the evening which is full of what? Sugar, fat, and salt. So it's pretty telltale, and this is astounding what he found, and they did experiments in it over and over and over again. He said that what? He said that cancers, he said this, the results of these studies showed that nutrition, nutrition is far more important in controlling cancer promotion than the dose of the initiating carcinogen. We tend to think it's something out there that does it, that causes the cancer, some kind of carcinogen. No, it has to do with those fruits and vegetables. That, that, that's the beauty of it. And he said here, if I can find this. Uh, warm in here, isn't it? I'm never warm, and I'm definitely warm. From our extensive research, one idea seemed clear. Lower protein intake dramatically decreased tumor initiation. I'm just curious. Have you heard any of that information from your medical doctor? Or from any of our health care professionals? Or from the news broadcasters? or from any of the talk show hosts? <laughs> Why don't we hear it? I know Oprah got in a lot of trouble because she was bad-mouthing burgers. Mm -hmm. She went through a whole soup because of that. My goodness. She couldn't speak the truth about that, and so I guess we don't, we don't go there anymore. But in the meantime, what's happening? We're dying all around us. So, Warning, excess protein is hazardous to your health, by the way, not plant protein. It's animal protein. You can eat as much plant protein as you can get, as you want. It doesn't have the same effect as animal protein does. And here, this is one of the posters I use for one of my other lectures. Protein causes all these, these things cancer. Breast, colon, prostate, and pancreas. Colon cancer, 55,000 of us die every year. This is just to give you an example because we think that chicken and fish are better. That's the common thing out there. To this morning in the, at SARC, at the workout room on the other side of the lockers, on these women were talk, yakking back and forth about the chicken, and the chicken's better for him. And then they have the fish, and oh, but I don't have red meat and I don't have pork, but you know, I have chicken or I have fish every day. And it's like, see what we don't know? It's just that we don't know. We literally don't know. I mean, if it was out there, as much as the swine flu is out there right now, we would know. Why don't they scare us about the animal protein? I don't get it. Instead, they scare us about something that, what, takes a few lives. I, I feel bad about that, but why aren't they trying to scare us about the animal protein? Why? Because it has to do with money and industry and all of that. 
And we're the ones that are being duped. So we have to stand up for ourselves and learn this stuff. But look at even with colon cancer. If you eat chicken four times a week versus none, your, your chances of getting colon cancer increase by 200 to 300%. If you eat chicken or turkey one time a week versus none, your, your um, percentage of goes up 55% risk. If, unless you, as compared to not having any. The United States government says itself, the meat causes 54% direct deaths in the United States. And this is conservative. You know it's conservative, but it came from the United States Public Health Service in 2000. So if you look at it, it's out there. And then what about the milk? Huh. You know, this woman might know something about finance. <laughs> what makes her an expert on milk? And why do we believe it? They do it for the money, and what it does is she has no idea what she's doing. So she's using her name to kill people. You know, something's wrong with that. And I don't care how much respect I have for her as a finance expert, but something dings her character when she does this. So, in milk, you have the fat, the fat, the cholesterol, the milk sugar, the milk protein. All of these are related to what? Breast cancer. The milk protein itself causes these kinds of things along with breast cancer and prostate cancer. Big correlation between prostate cancer and dairy products. Breast cancer and dairy products. Besides that, you'll have contaminants in your milk, including hormones. The hormones in milk, the ones, uh, hormones in dairy products, the ones that are given to animals artificially, they, what? You get more hormones in your body then. But even if there's no hormones injected, there's still hormones, as we said. So the, you have the hormones and the pesticides in there. And then, look what else we're eating. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the meat. Now we're talking about the dairy products. Now we're talking about the altered foods. All of these foods, the processed, the refined, the preserved, the man-made foods, they're correlated with what? Cancer. Those are promoters of cancer. And what about the five deadly light whites? All of our refined foods, white rice, white flour, white sugar, white salt, and white oils, any kind of oils. They are what? Promoters of cancer. Refined grains, promoters of cancer. Salt, cancer, cancer. Sugar, cancer. Trans fats. Trans fats are man-made fats. They are saturated, they're both saturated and unsaturated fats. They are, have to do with, they're in everything. The hy our hydrogenated fats, look at the label, if they have a hydrogenated fat, they know that's connected with cancer. So here we are, anything processed and packaged, and, and then fat. Look at all the fat we're eating, and then look at the fat we're carrying on our bodies. Fat is what? A promoter of cancer. Coffee. And then we think this. <laughs> well, I, how, how often do we say this to ourselves? <laughs> I eat in moderation. Do we eat in moderation? <laughs> we don't. Americans don't do anything in moderation. <laughs> we just, <laughs> we don't. Think about what we have for lunch, lunch breakfast, dinner, and snacks. And to prove it, that we don't eat in moderation, is this chart. I love this chart. It's by uh, Joel Furman. 51% of us, or what we eat, is refined and processed food. 51%. So you can't tell me we eat in moderation. This is what people in the United States, 51% of what we eat is refined and processed. And 42% 
are dairy and animal products. 7% fruits and vegetables. This is the only thing we eat in moderation, only we don't eat enough of it. 7%. <laughs> and half of the 7% is what? <laughs> Potatoes in the form of french fries and potato chips. But we have all these excuses <laughs> why we don't eat correctly. Oh, I have company. Oh, I'm going on a trip. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, but my husband is a meat and potatoes guy. <laughs> we love to blame our husbands for everything. <laughs> and the bottom line is, they don't knock you on the ground, open your mouth, stuff food down your face, and make you eat a certain way. The truth is this, of the women that I've worked with, the truth is this. We're just as emotionally and physically addicted to that food as our husbands are. And we, it's really easy to blame our husbands. And I admit, it's harder when you want to change and your husband's not up to it. But the bottom line is, it's not impossible. We, have to, we need to work on that. These are the cancer risks right here. But I want to show you this. This I just got out last week from USA Today. And the half a page ad, I have no idea how much that cost. Early detection just takes a moment. See, this is what we advertise. And for all of our bre the breast cancer movement out there, and for the, all the emotion it evokes, because it certainly does evoke emotion, doesn't it? Is there any such thing as breast cancer early detection? You tell me. What do you think? Is there any such thing as early detection? No. And I'll explain to you. So listen to what I have to say, because at the, what you're going to have is a little quiz at the end. You, you're not going to do it tonight. But you're going to have this little quiz, or this little brain teaser, I call it. And most of the information I've covered, or I'm covering. And so what you do is you go home, and you answer the questions. And then you bring it back to my office within a week. Then we're going to have a drawing next week for a free consult with me, which is worth $250. It's, you know what? It's just my way of getting you involved. I want you to think. I want you to leave here, have some information with you, and think. Because I would like you to be one of the warriors. I want you to be one of the anti-promoters of cancer. Anti-promoter of cancer. So anyway, pencil. When one, one cancer cell forms in the breast, one cancer cell, it takes 100 days for that cancer cell to reproduce into a second cancer cell. 100 days. That means to me that our body has 100 days to get its act together, its immune system together, lots of fruits and vegetables, in order to do what? To eat up the cancer cells. That's what that means to me. It takes, at that rate, it takes six years, six years to grow one million breast cancer cells. One million. And one million breast cancer cells fits on the tip of this pencil. Is that detectable? No. After 10 years, on the average, you will have 1 billion breast cancer cells. It's that big. It's the eraser of a pencil. <coughs> then it's detectable. And it's detectable by all the sophisticated equipment that they have, maybe, maybe two years ahead of if you can palpate it yourself. Only two years, which means what? It's already been there eight years on the average. So when they advertise this kind of a thing, is there any such thing as early detection? But don't you wish they would talk about promoters of cancer? What are the promoters of cancer that I just went over? <laughs> What are the anti-promoters of cancer? What are the anti-promoters of cancer? Fruits and vegetable. 1010, my plan is wrapped around. And by the way, it's not my plan. <laughs> I'm not that smart. It's God's plan. I did not create this food. It grows from the ground and grows from the trees. It's common sense. We've got to look at nature. So it's, it, it, it's not my plan. I just happened to put a cute little number and a cute little pansy with it, but it's really not my plan. It's nature's plan. So I wish they would put that kind of information and advertising in here. And you can't tell me that those companies and those organizations 
And the, I'm sure this is sponsored by the cancer, yeah, the National Breast Cancer Foundation. You cannot tell me that they cannot afford to talk about prevention and that early detection, there's no such thing. By the time it's detected, it's been there for a long time. So three stages of cancer. Actually, you should write them down. Number one, it's the initiation phase. And, that's, and that can happen within seconds. You know, you just, a cancer just goes, or a cell goes awry, and genetically it's changed. And once a cell is changed, it's changed forever. The only thing that can happen is something in the body can eat it up. But once it's in there, once it's there, it's there. So initiation stage is absolutely irreversible. Once the, the genetic code of a cell is changed into a cancer cell, and those cancer cells are renegades, they don't know what to do. And so once you get too many of those, then we die because we don't have enough cells to, to keep us breathing and keep us doing what we need to do. The second phase is what? Promotion. So write that down. And then the third phase is progression. Progression. You know what that is? When, it, when the grass is, doesn't just grow, but it grows into the sidewalk, it grows into the road, it grows into the, all the gardens, it takes over. It's when it goes from one site, the original site, to other sites. It's metastasizing. As T. Colin Campbell says, T. Colin says, not me. Once you're in that phase, it's fatal. So once cancer goes into another place, as he says, it's fatal. Now, does that mean it's fatal tomorrow? <laughs> no, not necessarily. But if you live long enough and something else doesn't take you, then yeah, it's fatal. Because your body's out of control. The whole immune system is out of control. So these are the things that, these are the cancer risks. Oh, my goodness. I don't have time. So you had the meat and the dairy products because... It increases the fat, the cholesterol, the animal protein, the calories, the hormones, and it decreases the fiber and the nutrition that you get and the enzymes. We don't have time to go over all that, so you just have to take my word for it. Oils and fats, vegetable oils, trans fats, and hydrogenated fats. So what you could write down is the cancer risk. One, meat and dairy. Two, oils and fats. Alcohol, coffee, being overweight, radiation, toxic chemicals, Lack of exercise and smoking. The most important one of all of this is what? Dietary. Dietary, fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. We have to eat those anti-promoters of cancer. So we have to eat more anti-promoters than we do of the sugar and the salt and the, and the protein and the cholesterol and all the chemicals and all the garbage that we eat all the time. So what we have to do is load up on what? The fruits and vegetables. So number one rule, add and fill up on the best food for you first in 1010. Where do you think I got this? I did not make this up. I got it from the guys that really know their stuff. So what we need to do is Add and fill up on the best food for us first. And then once in a while, 80% of the time, you can have wiggle room. But don't wiggle too much. This is what they are. And really, this poster really basically should be fruits and vegetables. And whole grains are not breads. Breads are not whole. They're fractured grains. Grains have to be like brown rice or whole oats. But breads are not ever, 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 ever whole. They're fractured grains. You can't, you take a wheat from the field and then you do all this to it and you put it in a package and you put this great big label on it. Those are not whole grains. It's bread. And what does bread have in it? Flour. Usually some refined flour. Anything that says uh, just uh, wheat flour is white flour, really. So it says flour, salt, sugar, hydrogenated fat, and all those chemicals that you can't pronounce. That is not real food. Brown rice, that's a whole grain. Legumes are beans, seeds, and nuts. Raw is the best way of getting what? Anti-promoters of cancer. Because as soon as you cook something, it takes the nutrition out, and it messes with the fiber, and it messes with the vitamins, and it messes with the minerals. So, and it kills all the enzymes, and enzymes are very important in our body. So it, we really need to eat as much raw food as possible. 
Fiber, what does it do? It helps control right here hormone balance plus doing all the other things. And we know this stuff. So the fiber is really important in the raw, not in the cooked. And then how else can you get anti-promoters of cancer? What about juicing? Okay. This is juice that I made at lunchtime. And I'll have this twice a day. And I mean, this, was, it looks, this is what it looks like. This is real juice. So I, I have a juicer, and I have it up here, so you can come and look at this. And I've been juicing for almost 30 years, almost every day. So here's the juice. What do you think? <laughs> I'm, always a, I'm always afraid I'm going to spill it on my something. I mean, look at that. It doesn't look like orange juice, does it? Or grape juice, or that apple juice, like Mott's apple juice. This is what's in it. I happen to have something to show you. I'll show you what's in it. This is what's in it. Okay, this is what's in it. These are anti-promoters of cancer. How else are you going to eat all of this? You can't. You can't possibly eat all of this. But what you do do is juice this. And then after you do the juice, then you eat what? A great big salad or a fruit or something where, that has the fiber in it. But this is on purpose, takes the fiber out. I know this is confusing, and I can answer, and I can I, I explain it to you, and I have books on it. But the juice is for nutrition. You get your nutri nutrients in the juice, not in the fiber. Do we need the fiber? Yes. And you'll get the fiber. You're going to get that on your other fruits and, and vegetables. But the juice is your true supplement. You want a supplement? Let's have a supplement. Fruits and vegetables. OK, this is what's in it. This is chard. Some people don't, probably don't know what this is. Chard. I don't want to ruin this. Chard. This is kale. This is, look at this. This is an anti-cancer promoter. Are you going to eat that in your salad? Probably not. But you can juice it. And this is in it. Beet from Nash's. Yeah. This is in it. Cucumber. Cabbage is in it, and carrots are in it, not that many, but that <laughs> carrots are in it, right there. These are anti-cancer promoters, you see? Are we getting it? Yeah, and then, if you can't stand the taste, because it's kind of weird, you just stick an apple in it, or stick a lemon in it, or stick in um, ginger, fresh ginger in it. And then your skin should look orange, like mine. See? It's orange. So when people tell me that they're juicing, I go, OK, let me see your, your hand. Let me see how much you're. So if you look at my hand, now I'm doing it just using a volunteer here. Look. The di see the difference? That's anti-cancer promoter right there. And if I did that to any of you here, I'm guessing, <laughs> except for Jolene, but Jolene's not here tonight. She's as orange as I am, I swear. But anyway, there you go. So what do we need? We need a, like a, thanks. We need to be like little <coughs> orange light bulbs. <laughs> you know, we have a glow. When, when my swimming partner follows me in the pool, and she's been following me for 20 years, she makes fun of what? My orange feet. <laughs> because it's just not here. It's all over it. We're supposed to have, what is that? It's not the carrots. It's the detoxification of the liver. It's an, it means I'm eating a lot of anti-cancer promoters. And by the way, it's also anti-diabetes promoter, anti-heart uh, disease promoter, anti-stroke promoter, anti-weight promoter. See? So it all works together. So juicing, it gives you all these things here. 10-10 for life is the, the plan. I want you to do this. Think addition, not subtraction. Let's get our things out. <laughs> I knew I had to. This handout, the first handout, breast cancer increase risk factors. So decrease your breast cancer risk factor. And I just want you to put the first initial on the blank. 
so that you'll know. And you can fill it at home because I'm going to go through this fast because it's late. Which foods prevent cancer? What are they? Fruits and vegetables. Put an F and a V and then fill it in later. You see it? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. The next one. Blank and blank are my weight and disease warriors and energy and health heroes. What should be filled in there? Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Ooh, you're my cheerleaders. Am I centering my meals on Fruits and vegetables? And yes or no? Mark it now. Yes or no? Yes. No one. Yes. <laughs> Don't lie. No one sees this. Someone that I worked with today, and I've been working with her for a couple of years, she said, you know what I used to call you, Dr. Leslie? And I've heard it before, and I knew what she was going to say, but she didn't know that I knew that she did. She says, I used to call you the food Nazi. <laughs> and she was so afraid to come in to see me because, because she felt like I was judging her. And she said, now I realize that you're not judging me and that you love me no matter what, and five pounds here and five pounds there. Do you think that changes how I feel about you? <laughs> no. And actually, I don't look at people's bodies, except when I'm at working on them, adjusting them. I look at their faces. That's what I look at. Carrie, not too long ago, she says, you know, you're really right. You don't look at people's bodies. You look at their faces. Okay, down number four. Oh, no. If yes, congrats. If no, why not? One of the reasons why not is because you weren't taught to. Really? That's sort of the core of it. Our mommies didn't teach us. So as mommies, we've got to take responsibility. With every bite, ask yourself this. You see what I'm doing? I'm logically working through the things that I logically work through as I developed my uh, eating habits for myself, eating habits for my three children as a single mom, and then eating habits for who? For you. See? So that's, this is what the process that I went through. So you ask yourself, does this food feed me or deplete me? Then make a choice whether to eat it or not. Is this food an anti-cancer promoter? Or is this food a cancer promoter? Does this food cause breast cancer? Or does this food prevent breast cancer? Pretty clear, isn't it? Then what do I want to be doing and how do I, you fill in this later. What do I want to be doing and how do I feel in one, how do I want to feel in one year, five years, and ten years? So go to the next one. So now six, you fill it in later. What am I doing right now for my health assurance? Man, for every time they, tell, they talk about health care, health insurance, I wish they would say health assurance and not insurance. In the next year, five years, and ten years, number seven, I want you to fill this in now. Am I ready right now to conscientiously, consciously add more fruits and vegetables to my day every day and exercise every day? Yes or no? I mean, you know in your guts, so write it down. You shouldn't even have to think about it. Yes or no? Am I ready? No, I'm not ready. Be honest. Yes, I'm ready. Let's do it now. If yes, ask yourself every day. So when you get up in the morning, this is what you say. You don't bemoan the fact. If you've ever dieted, what do we think about? What we're going to have to give it up? But instead of that, no, 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 no. Our brains don't hang on to the negative. Our brains hang on to the positive. So when you get up in the morning, you say to yourself, what do I get to add to my day? What do I get to add to my day? And what do you get to add? Fruits, Fruits and vegetables. vegetables. And so you incorporate those into your life first. And then if you want, does it, never, does it mean you can never, ever, 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 ever eat other food? No. But what it does mean is that you're going to eat those foods first. What do I get to add to my day? So it's not all or nothing. We're not trying to get you to do the impossible because we know that it's hard to leap from here to over here. Katie, don't we know that? It's hard. We're in the thick of it all the time. It's the hardest thing you'll do in your whole life. If you can do this, if you can change your eating habits, I guarantee you, you can do anything else you decide to do as long as it's not being a professional basketball player. It has to be reasonable. So look at here you are. What are my one-year health assurance goals? And so these you do on your own. I am, whatever it may be, this is an example. If it's not weight, it's something else. I am going to lose how many pounds and how many pounds is that a month? So if it's 30 pounds, which I recommend, no more, or 2.5 pounds a month. I am, and what are the other things you want to do? So here's suggested one-year goals. I am going to get off my high blood pressure medication because it causes impotence. 
every time. Every time. You don't do that stupidly. <laughs> you do that with supervision from your doctor, but that could be one of your goals, and then you work with your doctor. So next, number three. What is my daily practical plan to achieve my one-year goals? What are this month's five doable, specific action steps? You know, it's all well and good for me to stand up here and rant and rave and, you know, wave my arms and, and stand on my head and do all those kinds of things. And for you to say, yeah, yeah, Dr. Leslie, you're such a really good speaker, that means nothing to me. It means absolutely nothing to me. I am not here to impress you. I am not here to change you. I am here for you to, I'm here to help you open up doors of awareness into your own minds. And you know what's the proof of that? When you do something. That gets me going. When you come in to me and you say, you know, like someone came in to me today and said, you know, you have never met him, but my husband reads all your stuff, reads all your, reads all your stuff, reads all your emails. I bring home stuff from, from you, and now he will not miss a day of walking, even though I've never seen him. That gets me going. You know, when an action sub, someone's able to, even one action sub, someone's able to say to me, this is what I'm doing now, and thank you very much. You helped me understand this. Did I do it for you? No, 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 no. Do I get the credit? No. I don't get the blame either if you don't do anything. I, get, I don't get the credit. You get the credit because you're the one that's done it. So what are this month's five doable specific action steps? One, two, three, four, five. And there, here are some suggestions underneath. Think, plan, and prepare ahead. So think about what you're going to do. That's an action step. 95% of it takes place in our brains, doesn't it? Add, you can add fresh fruit. I put 10 down there, you can put five. Whatever, wherever you are, just go to the next level. Um, and then there's different ideas there. So think about what you think you can do. If you can only do three things, then put down three things. But then this is what you're going to do. Write it down so you don't forget when you get home. Aren't you excited you came tonight? Yeah. <laughs> actually getting something out of it. Jeff. You think? <laughs> Pick out one of those things. This is what Carrie and I do in Pants Party. Pick out one of those five things or three things that you wrote down. Pick out one that you're going to start tomorrow and you're going to do every day for a week. Pick out one that you're going to do. You find one? Can you think of one? <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> Can you think of one? What's one thing that you can start doing tomorrow? Tomorrow. Walk. Yeah, that's a good thing. So write that down. So one thing you're going to do. And then here on the back, or the next page, fill out all these things. What, what is my big why for taking care of me? Who do I want to live for? I don't know about you, grandmas, but I want to live for my little grandbabies. I don't know about you, but I want to live for my little grandbabies. So here's a contract with yourself. So it'll thrill me to death if you actually do this. The contract with yourself. You sign it now. Now, sign it. Date it now. You see it all? So you're going to sign it, date it. And then here's your action steps. Before, it's just sort of a worksheet. This is your contract. This month, I will commit to these monthly action steps. Whatever you think that you can do, not some pie-in-the-sky goal. Whatever you think you can do, write it down and write it down here, and then follow through with them. And pick one that you're going to start tomorrow. Pick one out of those that you're going to start tomorrow. Here's some quotes down there. So do that, and then here you have the Breast Cancer Prevention Life After Hormone Re Oh, I didn't call it that. I changed the name. What did I change it to? What's the one with the true and false little quiz? What's that called? breast cancer, brain teaser or something. Okay, this is what we're doing with these. You go home and you fill it out, and I suggest you do it tonight. I know it's going to be late, but do it tonight so you don't forget. Bring it down to my office. Then we put all those names. No, no, no. You bring it down to my office. Then the ones that get the most right, the one person that gets the most right gets the consult with me. If there's two people that tie or three people that tie, then they all go into the hat. 
So if there's one of you that is just a little bit better <laughs> in answering these questions than the other ones, then you'll get it automatically. But if there's three of you that tie, you go into the hat and we draw from there. So one of you will get that. This is just my way of getting you involved and getting you thinking about some of the things we said. Did I talk about everything here? Probably not, but that's okay. Just use your good common sense. So let's end here. Oh! I mean, I made this today. I have to show it. Darwin, look. Can you see? Darwin says you have to show so you can actually see it. Here it is. What do you think this is? What did we call it? What kind of food is this? Anti promotional food. Anti promotion, anti cancer promotion food. This is a salad that I ate for lunch. Well, not this, but it looked like this. <laughs> this is a salad I ate for lunch, and it has over 10 vegetables in it. Would that fill you up? This is what you call anti-cancer promotional food. You have to that, and you were full. So what you do is eat until you're full, and then you stop eating, even if it's salad. So sometimes I make myself too much, and what do I do with it? I, excuse me, but I throw it away. So anti-cancer promotional food. Now if you have that every day, and you have a couple glasses of that juice every day, and then you have this for breakfast, <laughs> I'm not going to say cancer doesn't have a chance because I could have it right now, so I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not messing with a big guy upstairs. No, no, no. But I'm trying to do the best I can do. So this is what I'll eat literally, as long as I'm not too busy at work, but literally if I'm home, this is what I'll eat before noon. So before noon, I get this. More bananas? Yes. That doesn't mean I think that you can eat all this. I think you have to eat as Marina, no, huh? We have to eat enough to fill us up, you see? So this is what I'll get in the morning. And then, and then at lunchtime, which is like maybe one or two for me, this is what I'll have for lunch, along with that juice that you saw. I'll have this. And then for dinner, I'll have a little less of this, and a lot of times just fruit. Do you put anything out of your salad? Yes. And what I put on the salad, a good question, is this avocado. I cut this. And by the way, everything's cut really finely. I don't like big chunks of stuff. And so here's an avocado. If you're trying to lose weight, I do half. But if you're not, then don't worry about it. I use an avocado, but actually I put two avocados in. But I don't want you to do that. Just one is good, or half of one even. Half of avocado, dice it up really finely. You put it in your salad. Then I take a half a lemon like this. I don't like to eat it plain, by the way. You know, for as hardcore salad eater than I am, that I am, I don't like to eat it plain. So lemon, I just take a half a lemon, squeeze it on, and then I happen to bring it. I happen to have it in my car with me. Then I use balsamic vinegar. Now there's a case to be stated that vinegar would cause your body more acid, and if your body's more acid, then cancer likes to grow. But at the same time, you just have to judge what you're going to do and you know you just have to this is more important than worrying about this you put beans on it. yeah you can put beans on it or your rice on it whatever you want to do see and then this is the trick women this is the trick you stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it does anybody do this <laughs> Rena? Yeah. stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it until the avocado coats everything it's perfect you don't have to buy expensive salad dressings, and most salad dressings have what in them? Sugar, salt, oil. You know, if it's made with water, it also is made with a bunch of chemicals. I got tired of all of that. And besides that, they're expensive, especially when you eat this much salad. <laughs> Can you imagine what you're doing for your body? Not to mention your energy level. Not to mention your aches and pains and moans and groans. Not to mention your headaches. Not to mention the chances of getting heart disease and stroke and diabetes. See? It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So, this past um, summer, if I can get through this, this past summer, um, a dear friend who I've been taking care of for, I think we figured out like 30 years in my office. And I see her once in a while in social situations, very close to her. I've always 
felt very close to her. And he, she um, came into my office, and probably for, I'd say, a month or a little bit more, she was not walking well. I mean, just all of a sudden, boom, wasn't walking well. And, you know, I took care of her back, and it, it just didn't really make sense to me. And um, so I said to Katie, who's been working with me for um, 22 years, I said, Katie, I think something's wrong with your mom. This doesn't act like it's supposed to act, because it was Katie's mom. And Katie's, and I've been working together 22 and a half years, but I've known her mother longer. And so, so you know, so she went through different things to try to figure out what it was, and um, <laughs> had no Katie's mother. I mean, she was just...